can go to extremes and say that the man who was going to be the best player that ever lived, Tiger Woods, went along after winning the US Open by 15 shots, not three or four or five, 15 shots, went for lessons, and as he said to me himself, he got confused. This man taught him this, this man taught him that, and that man taught him that. And that was the start of the demise of Tiger Woods, the start. And we all hope he comes back and plays well. So the knowledge is so vitally important. And in my 64 years, I only played with one man in my life that knew the swing entirely, and that was Ben Hogan. But he wouldn't tell you much. Right, let's have a look at this one. Let me see your grip, okay? Nice grip, nice grip. Not standing very well, but nice grip. Okay, now it's great. <laughs> Gorgeous swing, right? Gorgeous. Right, let's start at the beginning. Watch this, guys. Now, that toe is like a duck, it's sticking out. No, it must come in. No. Now, I want you to do me a favor. Turn it in more, just for fun. Now, swing now and feel. You'll feel some tightness in there. Feel this, feel. You feel that? Yeah. So, that's giving you what they call torque. It's like a spring. If the swing goes back like that, there's no effect, right? Whereas if, the, if you take the elastic band and you pull it back, it release it. Now in this, when you had your leg like that, and that leg does that, you're losing the torque, you're losing that firmness here, which allows you to spring. That's your first problem. So you don't have to turn it right in, we just did an experiment. And this must be open. Yes. What? Now, what do you think about when you hit the ball? There's the ball, you now are playing in a tournament, and you've got to hit the fairway. What do you think about the swing? You say, there's the ball, hit it? Or what do you think about it? Uh, I'd be surprised if you get a, a 2 out of 10, but go on, Lynch. Uh, what do you think about it? Like the whole, whole, the whole swing, whole thing? Yeah, well, now, you stand here now, and you need a 4 to win that one. You've got it. There's something that makes the swing work, all right? Maybe you don't think that way. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? Well, let me ask you this. When you practice hitting drivers, let's go another way. You're standing here practicing hitting drivers. What are you practicing? Uh, rotation. Which way? On the back swing, I think. Uh, upper body rotation and then on the downswing it's more of a lower body movement. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. You guys, what are you thinking about? Let me see your swing. Let me see your swing. This is very important. This is gonna help every this is gonna help every one of you immensely. Right, there's the now you stand it down and Lovely grip. Okay. Great swing. Great. But there's one million of them that have it in the world today. Maybe two million. So the swing is not the thing. It's how your mind works, how fit you are, what you eat, how hard you practice, how much passion you have, how much you prepare to suffer, etc., etc. Let me see your swing. Beautiful swing. All right, what do you, I want you to tell me about what you think about when you're hitting drives here. What do you think? Uh, what is, in the, the theory of the swing, what are you thinking? I like to feel like I have like a slower transition because sometimes I get quick. Beautiful swing, beautiful stand here again. You ready? Watch this like a duck out here. What are you putting out? <laughs> That's it. Now, now feel this when you go back. You'll feel tight in your back swing. Watch. You feel that? I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about when you hit the ball? Um, just the shot shape mainly. Yeah. The shot shape. Yeah. Okay. So will you say right? So now you give me an example. You want to hit? Um, uh, I'll low fade. Yeah, I'll just think about what I need to do to help low fade. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and you want to hit it tall. So in other words, are you, what do you do when you want to hit it straight? Um, I'll, uh, now listen to that question, guys. Go on. Uh, I'll think about uh, the path of the face. Basically, what what I need to do. I, I know I know the swing to hit that shot shape. So um, I just change the setup a little bit. Okay, best answer, him by a mile. The whole secret to the game is a backswing and a downswing, right? Right. You've all got good grips, you all have good speed through the ball, you've got beautiful looking swings, but you've got to have something that works under pressure. And what you did say that I liked, 
and I put you in the question and said when you hit it straight I would like you to have said I never try and hit it straight because if you hit it straight it's a bloody fluke you can't hit it straight every top player you see they get on the tee they need a four to win they draw it they fade it Bubba what oh, look at Bubba how about Bubba Watson swing I mean it's I mean <laughs> Okay, but look how he plays. The swing is not the thing, but Bobba gets up and it's very effective. He tries to draw it or he tries to fade it. He never tries to hit it straight because you can't hit it straight. If you hit it straight, it's a fluke. So when now you say, well, why is that? There's your fairway. It's 30 yards wide. Let's take this, this practice tee. This is the width of your fairway. If I aim here off the tee, back there to try to hit it on this fairway, and here's the middle of the fairway, I've got nine yards of error, nine yards of error, but if I aim there and fade it, I've got 18 yards of error, so you've got double the chance, or you aim on the right and you draw it, you've got twice. If I'm playing a hole, and there's water on the left, and I need a four to win the tournament, and there's water on the left there, and it's a narrow fairway, I aim out there and I draw the ball and I make this my fairway. I forget about that. All I want to do is be one inch on this fairway. One inch, that's all. So I aim out there and I hook the ball. I can't aim out there and hook the ball in the water. It's almost impossible. So I aim out there and I hook the ball and I try and put it on this little piece of fairway here. So the course management and the way you play and you go around a golf course is the secret. And to have the right mind and to have the right course management. You look at Jack Nicholas, his course management was impeccable. Tiger Woods, incredible. That's what separates just one of the things that separate besides the word called talent that separates the other people. Now, what you said is the most important thing. You can't worry about the path of your club face. You have no control of it. It's too, it's too fast. It's, and it's a tiny little thing and you've got to bring that club back to that ball the same way every time. If you're a quarter of an inch out here, you're in the bush. If you're a quarter of an inch there, that's what makes golf so impossibly difficult. So you've got to do something to make it easy. Now, the most important thing in golf, from the top of your back swing, you take your left hip from there, and you just rotate it. See that? You don't think of your hands. The hands come in automatically. The weakest part of your body are your hands. So why hit the ball with the weakest part of your body? And that was the difference between British and American golf. Henry Cotton introduced hitting everything with their hands, hitting it with their hands, all little hand shots, hand shots. And the Americans were using the, whoo, the this here, 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 is 50 times stronger than that. I can put 325 pounds on my back and I can squat with that. I pushed 400 pounds the other day with my leg. I can't push 100 pounds with my arms. So what you've got to learn to do is watch from, watch, Tiger Woods was phenomenal. Rory, now, watch Rory, he goes back and he goes, shoo! And look how he stands, like a, like a ballet dancer. Absolutely unbelievable rotation. So that's number one. Why have you got to rotate? Because you've got to bring, the, the whole thing in golf is to try and swing under pressure. Because everybody can play well when there's no pressure. When you're playing under pressure the last nine holes, how many guys fold up? As we saw Jordan Spieth at the Masters, he folded up. You've got to have a swing that works under pressure. So when you clear that left hip from there, when you clear that left hip, that club then comes down on the inside, on the inside, and you hit what you call, you feel. You feel as though your club's hitting the inside of the ball here. Now, when you use your hands, you start down, you hit the outside of the ball. Once you hit the outside of the ball, you're gone. Now, so, back there, shoo, that left hip has got to be cleared before you make impact. So when I stand and I practice, I go, shoo, 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 hit and hold, shoo, hit and hold, shoo, hit and hold, move, shoo, move your weight forward. Show, don't hang back. Now, look who's strong. Come here, man. Come here, put your clubs on the ground. Watch this. Don't let me push you over. I'm 82. I weigh 154 pounds. I walk around with a walking stick. Don't let me push you over. You standing strong? 
Stand as strong as you like. No, that's not strong enough. Stand. Right, now, if I hang back, I can't push him over. I'm trying to push him over, I can't. I'm gonna push him right on his butt. Now, when I use my weight and I get my rotation and move it all onto this leg, uh, you see, you ready? Okay. I take these big American football players. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, here's the man I'm looking for. <laughs> now, I don't know what I can do with him because he eats like it's the last supper. <laughs> How'd you like to pay for his meals? Right, oh, I've got a job. Now, if I hang back, I can't push him over. See that? Are you ready? Yeah. You standing strong? Yeah. Strong as you can? Yeah. Now watch when I rotate my weight onto my left side. Ah! I take these big American football players, they say you little saw, sawn off South African runt. You're not gonna push me off. I said, I'm gonna push you right on your ass, man. Do you think so? I said, I know so. Because it's leverage. And so when you hit the ball with your hands, there's no power. Now you get whew, all your mass, all your big muscles are really into play and you get the club head speed. And that's why Rory McElroy and Jason Day and these young guys that are stringing the club well, which they've done throughout history, Bobby Jones might still be the best. All had, you watch Bobby Jones swing the club. Shoo! Beautiful balance like Rory. And with an old, with an old garden rake stick as a shaft. Bobby Jones shot 287, listen to this. Bobby Jones shot, excuse me, in 1927, if my facts are right. At St. Andrews, Bobby Jones shot 285, 285 to win the Open with a rake stick, a head that looked like a frying pan, no grooves, and a ball that went a hundred yards less. He shot 285. What a golfer. What a golfer. That's number one. Number two, you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to practice the right backswing. Now, here's the big problem. Right, let's take you, come over here. Right, now stop, just stop here. Come and stand this up. I want you to stop just there, all right? Okay. Well, about there, stop there. Put your back, stop. <clears throat> A little higher. Now, watch this. Poison. <laughs> See, now watch, stand over here. Okay. This I only learned when I was 70 years old. I won all those majors, 165 tournaments, 18 majors, nine on both tours, swinging the wrong way. I only found this out when I was 70, and it suddenly twigged on me what the greatest player the world had ever seen, Ben Hogan, did. And, but he wouldn't tell you. But he mentioned it to me, though I was too damn dumb to understand what he was saying. He mentioned it to me in 19... 57 and I did not understand it and I only figured it out in when I was 70 years old now When you go back and you're there. I was always taught straight back straight back Now When you're playing under pressure you can be there watch the difference there 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 so we're talking about this, this discrepancy of that Now if you're that far out when you're playing tournaments, you're in trouble You've got to be able to swing the exact same way and even then it's tough so now if you go back with your left arm across your chest wham there see that you're then the same every single time whereas when you go back there you're different all the time and that's why they ranked where they are and shouldn't be ranked they should be ranking ranking better because they don't know these things besides the putting and other chipping little tips. But, so when you go now, you do not want to have a swing that's up here. That's not golf swinging up there. That's for a waiter carrying a tray. Or you do find freaks, Jim Fierig. Even Nicholas used to have a, a flying right elbow. It's like a great ad for right guard. But the right swing is to be flat there on that plane there. See that plane? Not here, but that plane there. You see the difference between that and that? Now you get that, we simplify it by saying left arm across the chest. But, here's the danger. Because the left arm comes across the chest, it means that your hands are coming back a little on the inside, not going back straight. Now, the club head goes back straight, 
In fact, this is the thing that I found out when I was 70 that Hogan was trying to tell me, in few words, the hands and the club head go back different directions. The hands come a little on the inside because of that, and the club head stays straight. When that club head gets there, you've had it. Watch, there. That's what you guys have got to practice. Left arm across the chest, and the club head there. Now from there, it's automatic. It's automatic, and then all you do is rotate the left hip. So you make it very simple. When you go and hit some balls here now, and you play today, you don't get paralysis of analysis. You just go back with your left arm across your chest there, or when you get home, go and practice it, which you won't do. But the left arm across your chest and the club head there. So, there's a straight line. Look at that. My arm is across my chest, but look at the club head. The club head's staying there. And you just go back automatically. And then what you get, what you call under the shaft. And when you're under the shaft, the reason Nicholas won for 25 years majors, and I won for 20 years majors, and Palmer only won for six years, Palmer was there and we were there. Very simple. My grandson he gets up at nine o'clock on holiday. He goes and plays 18 holes and he hits a bucket of balls. He said, yeah, I'll practice hard grab bar today. I said, you're a lazy little pig. <laughs> I said, do you realize in China, by the time granny is giving you breakfast in the morning, and by the time you've played 18 holes, they played 18 holes already by the time you've had breakfast or they've hit 5,000 balls all the time. They wake up and they practice it because they see in America and Britain, you can actually win a million pounds or a million dollars in a week. And their parents never won that in their life. And so they have this desire to do well. And unless you have that attitude, you ain't gonna make it. And so you gotta build a body, you gotta make say, I'm gonna build this thing like a plank, man. I'm gonna have the strongest stomach in the world. Every day I say that says, I want to see a man who's got a stronger stomach than me at 82. Come on, cha 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 <laughs> All guys at 82 walk around like this. They haven't seen their balls in the last five years. <laughs> They're finished. So you guys have got to build a body. You've got to build a mind. You've got to enjoy suffering when you play. Because this game is going to make you suffer and make you cry like a junkyard dog. And you better say, I'm going to practice harder than anybody else. And I'm going to have good manners. And I'm going to treat people with respect. And when a man beats me, I'm going to look him in the eye and say, well done. So Tiger Woods says to me in the locker room, I saw you in the Grand Slam on camera. And I noticed you never, ever looked. And if you watch Tiger Woods, I'll show you how he putted. Tiger Woods, if he had a putt inside six feet, this is how he hit it. Watch my eye. Never looked. He might have eventually peeped his, turned his eye a little bit like this. Just watch him, even today I'm watching the, the film. Now, you stand there, you look at the speed, you look at the line. Now, you got to see your putter. What I do is watch that black mark. Watch this now, watch. That is perfect, I saw it strike it. And then you watch. Now watch what happens if you, watch what happens if you move your head. Watch the putter. I go back, I move my head because this is all connected. Now watch. You move your head, the putter's offline immediately. You're gone. If you're that far offline, you're gone. That far. That's how, because you know that hole's only that damn big. So to hold the putt is pretty impressive. So if you can honestly say that from six feet, when I play in a tournament, if I got a six footer and in, if I see it go in, my caddy says, well, I say it's a terrible putt. You may not see a ball go in the hole from six foot. You'll know if it goes in, you'll hear it. Now, if you're deaf, you're allowed to look. But in a long putt, you'll keep it down and then the ball will be gone. And you'll have lots of time to see it rolling. So simple. Now, what does that do for you? It stops your putter from coming over the line. It gives you the right timing. When you putt, timing like anything in life is important. When you putt, you've got to have the right time to accelerate. If you move your head, you start accelerating here. If you move your head, you start pushing. But if you keep that head there, you learn to accelerate at the right time. Now, if I gave you, which on my farm, and my people who work on the farm realize that I pay them and keep them alive. When they see me with a hammer in my hand, in my prime even, hitting a nail in the wood, they say, please don't do that, give it to me. And I have that nail in there and I'm going, 
I make a mistake, I'm finished with golf forever. If you hit that thumb. And what I did was I watched the head of that nail. You never hit like that. Or like that. But you all putt like this. This is how you all putt. The whole lot of you. Like this. Like that. You've got to see that nail. That hammer hit that nail there. And it's the same with the putter. If you've got to see your putter actually strike that little black mark. And then look. You can't do it. But try it. Now. I hope we haven't made it complicated. <laughs>